jump! Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is the most uncontroversial Assassin's Creed game ever made. You'll hardly find any criticisms for it. Unlike games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Assassin's Creed 3, and Unity. But there are actually a lot of criticisms that I have for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And some really major ones too. But there's also some real greatness to this game that you just can't ignore. And I'm definitely gonna enjoy talking about that too. But let's see how this game holds up. A decade and a half later, the game starts right after Assassin's Creed 2. And my god almighty, immediately you get blown away by the graphics. Especially when you play as Ezio. The game does look great when you play as Desmond earlier on, but I'll talk about the modern day story at the end. But when you see Ezio and the first mission, it feels like you moved up two generations worth of consoles. The lighting is amazing, the detail is amazing, and the sharpness is perfect. I will say Mario kind of looks a little weird. Better in the hands of the earth than in the hands of man. Uncle. What can I say? We sent a single man against an entire army. I was worried. Quick, climb up. We have to get out of here. You would not believe the things I have seen, Mario. Then be sure to stay alive that I might hear of them. I expect opposition. And I expect the Borgia to mourn the loss of many lives tonight. Not sure why they massacred my boy Mario in this game. He was a real lady killer in AC2, but everything else about the art style is greatness. Nothing short of immaculate. And then Mario is like, don't worry Ezio, I'll keep the weed at my house so your parents don't find out. This decision is yours alone to make. Only do so quickly. Give it to me. You can do with it as you will later. Bene. Believe it or not, we are already done like 5% of the story, but I'll save that topic for later. But Ezio goes all the way back to Montreal Joni, and he's pretty popular. He's like the LeBron James of the city, a real hometown hero. But he does some errands, he does some naughty things with Christina, that 10 year old me should not have been looking at at that time. And then the game really starts. I know you're there, Ezio! The Pope told me about you and your little group of assassins. Andres! Give me the gun, his friend passion for us. We've had too much bloodshed. I think the cleansing is in order. So consider this an invitation from my family to yours. Mario died. Not cool. But we are introduced to the main antagonist of AC Brotherhood, Cesare Borgia. He's powerful. He's a good fighter. He's hooking up with his sister. He does it all really. A real stand-up guy. But he's basically a dumb Jamie Lannister. Cesare Borgia, in my opinion, is the most overrated part of this game and possibly the most overrated antagonist of the franchise. I really don't like how people think he's a phenomenal villain. He's definitely a good villain. He definitely makes me want to stop him. But he is a cartoon villain for the most part. I don't think he even comes in the same realm as someone like Hatham Kenway. But it would be lame if I said he didn't grow on me by the end of this game. But yeah, turns out Ezio, not game ending the Pope last game, comes back to eat him in the ass. Get it over with then. No. Killing you won't bring my family back. I'm done. I really hate that. AC2 is one of my favorite games of all time, but I also can't pretend that the only reason why Ezio spared Rodrigo wasn't just to keep him alive for this game and to keep things historically accurate. But Ezio gets shot, gets picked up, and we already have an assassin outfit. Pretty cool. And the first thing we do as an assassin is a tailing mission. Every Assassin's Creed fan's wet dream. Now AC2 did have some tailing missions, but Brotherhood was when they made tailing missions a huge mechanic of the franchise. A problem that would only get worse until Unity. But we help a few citizens, and we meet Machiavelli. Ezio, what a surprise to see you here. I thought you had sent for me. Never. News of the villa attack has spread across the city. We were certain that you were dead. Not yet. I am still very much alive. He basically just shows us how things go around here. He shows us the economy, but most importantly the Borgia Towers. The Borgia Towers are cool. They make viewpoints a lot harder and a lot more rewarding, so I like them for that. But most games do have something like this. Assassin's Creed 3 had those Fortnite takedown missions, and Assassin's Creed 4 had those naval fortress takedown missions, and I really enjoyed them here. They basically capture the zone, and you get assets, rewards, 
and fast travel. I also like how Machiavelli is like, yeah, Ezio, you dumb as hell for letting Rodrigo go. The hell was you thinking? But you go to a whorehouse, and you try helping them rescuing the whore queen, but fail. And your mom and sister show up, and are talking about making the whorehouse into a whorehouse monopoly. And it's actually pretty cool that your mom is actually talking to you. Mother? Sister? Ezio. Sir Machiavelli said that you might be here. What are you doing in Roma? Has Firenze been attacked? No, or rather, I do not know. We did not go to Firenze. Why? Ezio, we want to help. I was trying to help you by sending you to Firenze. Where is Madonna Solari? She's dead. Merda. What now? Will we have to close? You cannot close. I need your help. Messere, without someone who can run things, we're finished. I'll do it. You do not belong here, Claudia. I know how to run a business. I ran Uncle Mario's for years. This is different. What alternative do you have, Ezio? Your mom is actually talking to you in this game because the only way she was going to talk was if you brought her 100 feathers in EC2. And lord knows I did not find her 100 feathers. So I have no clue who told her to start talking again. I kinda enjoy not hearing her voice and the constant cooking of me. He's very talented. Imagino. Self-expression is vital to understanding and enjoying life. You should find an outlet. I have plenty of outlets. I meant besides vaginas. Mother. But some business gets done, and we get our first real mission, three sequences later. That's kinda why this game feels so short. The game really only starts after sequence three, after we meet an old friend who needs some help. Salve cittadini di Roma! Behold a sight most splendid! Caterina Sforza, she whore of Forli, has at last been brought to heel. Ha! No one kneels as low as Lucrezia Borgia! Who put you up to this? Was it your brother or your father? Perhaps a bit of both? Perhaps at the same time? Chiudi la bocca! None speak ill of the Borgia! The same will happen to any who defy us! Good people of Roma! Stay strong! You will be free! Your time will come! I swear it! Now you sneak into this giant ass monument, and I really like this mission. It's the first very stealthy mission where you truly get consequences. So let's talk about the stealth. The stealth in Brotherhood is again, uncontroversial. It's basically Assassin's Creed 2 stealth, but with better controls, better camera angles, and better mechanics. It's obviously nothing like AC Unity stealth, where you can smoothly run and cross through entire buildings, just murdering everyone like Arkham Batman, but it's still pretty good here. But you do have to realize that this game is only the third Assassin's Creed game, so stealth in Brotherhood versus Assassin's Creed 3 or 4 is a pretty night and day difference. You're not gonna find a bush to hide in. Brotherhood stealth mainly has to do with you hiding in corners, thugging it out, and praying to the Lord. And during stealth, you see some weird things. Only it gets quite lonely here. You and I spend so little time together these days, busy as you are with your other conquests. Soon, once I have secured the throne of Italia, you are going to be my queen. And your loneliness will be a thing of the past. I cannot wait. Behave yourself while I am gone. But as you do this mission, you really start to take some L's when it comes to this one mechanic, and that's the optional objective. The optional objectives are kinda like if the guy who killed Abraham Lincoln was told beforehand that he needs to kill Lincoln completely undetected, and he has the emote on his dead body afterwards, and only then can he reach level 100 boss. But I love these in my Assassin's Creed games. I love going for full synchronization. It feels like a pat on the shoulder at the end. It's almost like handing in a math test and finding out your result immediately. Sometimes this can get a little annoying, because sometimes it actively makes you do missions, and the most boring regular way possible rather than just going guns blazing and there are some times where it really takes out the fun factor like at the end of this game Ezio has the apple of eden and you really want to use it but every time you use it you lose health but in order to get full synchronization you literally can't lose health so now you can't use the apple of eden which completely takes away the fun aspect so you turn into an alcoholic looking at a bottle of liquor when you have the apple but luckily it's not forced at all and most people don't really care about the optional objective they try going for it but if they fail it's not a biggie so unless you're going for a perfect run it's not a problem and if you are going for a perfect run optional objectives like do not lose health are actually some of the most challenging fun and the most rewarding mechanics in the entire franchise but then Ezio talks to his sister and she's having a midlife crisis he loves me he loves me not he loves me he loves me not he loves me he loves me not he loves me, he loves me not. please continue i did not mean to interrupt 
Ezio Auditore da Firenze. How nice to finally meet after hearing so much. A pity Cesare is no longer here. He would have enjoyed this. My fight is not with you, Lucrezia. Free Caterina, and I will stand down. Impossible. Then you leave me no choice. Guards! So then you go save Katarina, and you basically stoutly and slowly move her across the building. And it's a pretty funny mission, and she gets to safety, and you take care of problems. Go to Isola Tiberina. Find Machiavelli there. You'll be waiting for me. What about you? Someone has to stay here and distract the guards. Get back in one piece, or I will never forgive myself. Go! Now right after this, you get thrown into a firefight. Ezio mogs down guard after guard. Now this is a good time to talk about the combat. The combat in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is the best you can get during these games. And I don't mean that in a challenging way. There's really nothing challenging about the combat whatsoever. There are enemies that are higher difficulty than others, but for the most part, hold the lock button and spam the attack button and you're gonna be able to get through most conflicts. There are times where there are waves of enemies and you have to focus more on timing and that's fine. But it's pretty easy, cool, but a bit dull. But something that is so fun about the combat in Brotherhood is kicking. You can just kick every guard in the city, like kicking a pregnant woman. No one's gonna stop you. You can just kick all the way until the end and it's pretty cool I gotta say. But you do eventually have to take your sword out. The animations are also pretty good and it's so much more satisfying than AC2, especially for his time. I still don't think that the combat is as dynamic as AC3's, but again, this game came out before, so can't really put it on this game, but the combat overall is fun. It can feel repetitive at times, especially during the ending, where you don't want to do the same thing for the 1000th time, but it is what it is. Ezio then goes to the guys, he says yo, we might not win this war, but I got an idea. Look, the Borgia rob everything from the people to maintain power. What do you intend to do? We will recruit him to our cause. You cannot be serious. To win this war, Machiavelli, we need loyal soldiers. By recruiting enemies of the state, we arm those who have been disarmed by the Borgia. Go then. Recruit our first novices. Ezio goes to find enemies of the state, people who were wronged by the Borgia. Ezio goes to them and says, hey, the second amendment is for you, my friend. And he arms them with guns and swords, and they are on track to become assassins. Assassin! The liberation of Roma has begun. If you choose to flee, do so now. But if you choose to fight, Stand with me against the Borgia. I am tired of hiding in the shadows. I will join you. Then seek Niccolo Machiavelli on Isola Tiberina, and we will make you one of us. Their lies will no longer mask your truth. The liberation of Roma has begun. You fight oppression. If you will have me, I will fight with you. I really like the recruiting system we have here. Ezio just snaps his fingers, and his Discord mods take out the enemies. It might not be the most realistic thing they added to an AC game, but with 2020 hindsight, this is a lot more believable than anything from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. But this system is so fun to use, and very convenient. If you want this game harder on yourself, because you have a pain kink, then go ahead. Don't use this system, but it adds a lot. Stealth is by far the best time to use this system. If you can use an assassin to kill a guard while your lazy ass is blending, then you gotta do what you gotta do. But in combat, it's where things get a little tricky. They can't really take out big groups of enemies like Ezio can. They can't help I guess, but I never really use them during combat, unless there's like two enemies left, and I need some help. But the best way to use this, is with the arrow storm. This really turns any enemy, into John F. Kennedy God rest his soul. But it completely drowns the amount of uses you have with it. But I found this system, is probably the coolest new mechanic of brotherhood, and it's a fan favorite. But then some mustache dude, steals your homie's girl. General Dalbiano, it seems that you have seen the light. Enough of your crap! Release my wife! Such entitlement from a man born with nothing to his name. Mine is worth its currency, unlike yours, which is counterfeit. How dare you? You think that commanding an army grants you nobility? Nobility comes from fighting beside your soldiers, not kidnapping a woman to cheat your way out of battle. Why don't you grow up here and release my wife? You savages never learn. This is just another big battle, and it's really fun. Ezio uses his disguise skills, you fight battles after battles, and it's pretty fun. Again, the combat alone is pretty fun, and this is just a more creative way to get into the combat, and it's refreshing. 
And then the next major mission is in the Colosseum. There's a play happening about Jesus and there's poison and betrayal involved. This mission was really fun. There is a lot wrong with it. I really don't like how uncomfortable Ezio climbs the Colosseum and it's really hard to tell which way you're supposed to go sometimes since you can just run through the top or even the bottom but for some reason the game pushes you to the top. But it's another one of those classic dress up missions. It feels like we are Roger from American Dad with all these costumes and Ezio is not a great actor but we finished the job. Will I not deny? Center. You cannot save Pietro. The wine he drank was poisoned. As I promised Cesare, I made doubly sure. I am not yet dead. I did not come here to kill you. He who is the cause of someone else becoming powerful is the agent of his own destruction. So yeah, this mission was iconic when the game came out. It was a pretty dark and bloody mission, but enjoyable. But one thing that I purposely forgot to mention is the whole thing with La Volpe. We obviously meet La Volpe in AC2. He has more screen time in this game, but he does seem like a random guy sometimes in this game. But he tells Ezio that he really doesn't like Machiavelli. La Volpe thinks he is a rat. He thinks he's 6'9", but there are some signs. But it turns out he was not. I have discovered the traitor. What? One of our men. He was at the villa attack. Here. He carried his letter. My God! This is good news. More than you know. I am once again in your debt, Ezio. What debt is there amongst friends who trust one another? Yes. Thank you for relaying the message in time. Come, Nicolo. It has been far too long since we've talked. I heard the Colosseum Passion Play took an unexpected turn this evening. Really? It seems Jesu Cristo was... Resurrected three days early. Glad we told La Volpe right before he almost killed him. That would have been bad. But that was a very cool scene. I really did love it. And the next scene is actually much better. Claudia is actually acknowledged for her hard work of sitting behind a desk for the last 25 years and doing nothing. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. Claudia, we here dedicate our lives to protecting the freedom of humanity. Mario, our father, and our brother, once stood around this fire, fighting off the darkness. Now, I offer the choice to you. Join us. And Machiavelli tells Ezio that he owes his life to him, and it's a really cool plot twist. Why this sudden change of heart? I have always stood by you. I was the one who brought you to Roma, and the one who caused the explosion as you fled the castello. The mercenari who protected you at Il Colosseo were mine as well. You just did not know it. Maestro Machiavelli! Cesare has returned to Roma alone! He rides for the Castel Sant'Angelo! Grazie. But Ezio goes back to the building we all love in this game, and it's a pretty cool full circle moment. We have come here a few times now, almost feels like a second home, and the Borgia family is falling apart. Cesare! He intends to poison you! You would not listen to reason. Father, do you not see? I control all of this! If I want to live, I live. If I want to take, I take. If I want you to die, you die! <coughs> where is the peace of Eden? Stop! I know where it is! And you did not tell me he had taken it? Cesare, it's me, your queen. You are my sister, nothing more. Where is it? You never loved me? Where is the apple? Tell me! Death! Tell me! I honestly feel like Rodrigo was very underwhelming in this game, or at least compared to what he could have been. I understand they were trying to keep him accurate, 
But still, we need so much more than this. I wish we had a real dialogue scene with Rodrigo. Like Ezio and Rodrigo's dynamic is one of the best in the entire series, but they just didn't give us much. Not a big fan of it. I guess it makes sense because Cesare is the main antagonist of this game, but I wish we had more Rodrigo. But that's not to say Rodrigo's death wasn't cool. I enjoyed the turning of dumb Cesare to completely mad Cesare, and that's what we have in the next hour. Just a mad little incest boy. You! Looking for this. It ends now, assassino! My sword will take your life. Now we have the Apple of Eden. Again, if you want this mission to be a perfect mission and you want to go for 100% synchronization, well this mission is gonna give you blue balls. It's the hardest edging session of your life. You're literally holding the apple, so if you don't use it, you might actually be a real life assassin. That takes true discipline. But if you're a little dweeb of a human, beta male, and you want to have fun, go have fun with the apple. I mean to be fair, it's not like Ezio can even handle this. He keeps almost dying so many times, but he can get the job done. It's probably the most unique mission in the entire game, and one of the most unique missions in the franchise, even though it's just you and a city killing a bunch of guards like a normal everyday monday for an assassin but because you can use this beast of a weapon you're having fun with this beauty and it's really fun seeing chesare's day getting worse and worse find them they are everywhere and nowhere at once i do not care how you do it we cannot on our own signore you must help us i am ill you idiot Micheletto will soon be here with my armies and then you will see how quickly the assassini fall you delude yourself, Cesare. Don't! But Ezio basically uses the apple in every mission until the end, and I really like the final mission. It's very dark and very climactic. I also love the very dark music in this mission. AC Brotherhood's music is also really good overall, just like Assassin's Creed 2's. Brotherhood's music is a lot darker, almost like his whispering satanic verses in your ear, and I love it. But you go to the boss fight, and it's nothing really special. Cesare has a lot of armor, he calls his guards every now and then, and the same thing happens for a few rounds, and eventually you kill Cesare. The throne was mine! Wanting something does not make it your right. What do you know? That a true leader empowers the people he rules. I will lead mankind into a new world. Che nessuno ricordi il tuo nome. Reguiescat in pace. You cannot kill me. No man can murder me! Then I leave you in the hands of fate. And then Desmond and the gang find out what we need, and the Sean really gets into that nerdy stuff. 1420, 1421. What if they aren't dates? 1419, 1420. Oh my god. What? God! Tell us already! I am, I am, I am! The Tetragrammaton, the 72 names of God, you see? They're all contained within three verses, Exodus 19 through 21. And get this, you'll like this, if you arrange the four Hebrew letters in God's name within an equilateral triangle, their numerical values add up to the same number. 72. Are you absolutely sure about this? That's kind of why I'm saying it out loud, Rebecca, yeah, but I haven't got to the kicker yet. Construction on the Colosseum began in the year 72. I think we have our password. But yeah, the modern day story in Brotherhood is easily the second best in the franchise. Again, I have said this before, in games like Assassin's Creed 1, 2, and Brotherhood, I don't mind the modern day. In games like Assassin's Creed 4 and Assassin's Creed Rogue, I really hate the modern day stuff. And in games like Unity, Origins and the rest, I find it really boring, but not that hateable. The only modern day that I really love is in Assassin's Creed 3. It's the only modern day where it's like, damn, this is real life Assassin's Creed, and it's really fun. Almost like Watch Dogs before Watch Dogs. But in Brotherhood, it's definitely alright for sure. It's mainly just parkour, and the narrative picks up right after AC2. But what makes this modern day story really one of the best is the climax. Doing. The path must be opened. You cannot escape your part in this. The scales shall be balanced.
Stop! Please! You know very little. We must guide you. Cease your struggle. No! It is done. The way lies all before you. Only she remains to be found. But that's it for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It's a really good game, but it's also a very short game. It's basically an upgrade on AC2 in most departments, and that's good. I'm happy they didn't try anything big with this game, and they instead focused on continuing the story of Ezio, and they do that in a great way. And there are things that I didn't mention that I also really enjoy, like the AC2 timeline missions in this game. <coughs> Christina, hold on! I'll get you to a doctor. You're going to be all right. No, it's you. I don't think I am. No! Don't go. Stay with me, Christina. It's you. Don't you know? I've always been with you. <sighs> I wish we could have had a second chance. My love. But overall I love it. It's definitely not in my top 3 Assassin's Creed games, mainly because it plays a bit too safe and how short it is, but judging it for what it is, there's not many criticisms. If you're an Assassin's Creed fan, then you're simply gonna enjoy your time with this game. But that's it for this video, like, subscribe, and peace peace.